Let's talk about DLC in Sonic games. Sonic may not come to mind when you think of DLC expansions, but the Hedgehog is no stranger to the occasional bit of downloadable content. In fact, if we really go back, Sonic the Hedgehog was one of the first console series ever to have DLC available for their titles. Way back on the Dreamcast in 1999, Sonic Adventure had a load of small DLC packs released that changed the game around a bit. For example, the Dreamcast launch party, which changed Station Square to a small party celebrating the launch of the system. There was also the Christmas DLC, which made everything look a bit more festive, and the Reebok-sponsored European Sonic Speed Challenge. This was a DLC that essentially was an event that took place across Europe. It featured a modified version of Emerald Coast, which had item capsules filled with Reebok shoes around the stage that Eggman apparently stole, along with Reebok branding everywhere. The top 50 people who collected the shoes and completed the stage with the fastest time won a prize. The prizes were actually pretty good as well. People who placed 11th to 50th won an exclusive European Sonic Speed Challenge Reebok shirt. People who placed 5th to 10th won a framed certificate and a pair of Reebok DMX shoes worth £50. The people who placed 2nd, 3rd and 4th won a framed gold Sonic disc, £200 of Reebok clothing plus a pair of Reebok DMX shoes. And the first place winner got a personalised Dreamcast pod which is essentially a 6 foot high display unit featuring a television monitor, console and controllers. They also got a trophy and one £1,000 worth of Reebok clothing, including a pair of Reebok DMX shoes. Sonic Adventure 2 also received some simple DLC as well, like menu themes for certain characters and themed costumes for things like Halloween and Christmas. All of this DLC is still available to download onto a Dreamcast in 2023 through Dreamcast Live's DLC archive, so I've actually been able to download all this DLC and try it out for myself. So yeah, that was a bit of a trip down memory lane. The Dreamcast games are the most prominent titles that spring to mind when thinking about DLC, but Sega did dabble with other titles as well. Sonic 06 got DLC for some strange reason, and Sonic Generations got that pinball DLC, which was admittedly pretty underwhelming. Considering the possibilities they had to bring other fan favourite stages over to that game, it really wasn't great. However, there is one title that really stands out in terms of DLC, and that is Sonic Unleashed. This DLC is by far the most comprehensive of any Sonic game thus far. In total, there were 6 DLC packs released for this game, and every location in the game except for Eggman Land was given both new day and night stages. Spagonia, Missouri, Alaska all received DLC packs that gave each country 4 new day stages and 2 new night stages. A combo DLC pack that included both Apatos and Shamar contained 5 daytime levels and 4 nighttime levels between them. And lastly, there was a DLC pack that included Empire City and Adabat and boasted again 5 daytime levels and 4 nighttime levels between the both of them. Now these are selling for £1.59 on the UK Xbox store, which is ridiculously cheap. Overall, when I bought all of the packs it cost me £9.54, which really is cheap considering this DLC brings brand new day and night stages to essentially every single location in the game, save for Eggman Land. But I weirdly never really hear anyone talk about the Sonic Unleashed DLC, because if you ask me, the original Unleashed game has been subject to a bit of a revival within the Sonic community. People really are starting to see this game as a much better title than what the consensus was when it initially came out, and it's getting a lot of credit for a lot of different things it did. But the DLC has little coverage really. It's not lost media, don't get me wrong, there is coverage of it out there, but it just seems to be so overshadowed by people talking about the base game, and it's just not something I see being brought up very often. Anyway, I've downloaded all the DLC packs, so I'm going to give this a go. Have these DLC stages flew under people's radar and are a bit of a hidden gem, or are they not talked about for a reason? Let's find out. Okay, so as the first stage I tried of the DLC levels, the huge difficulty spike from the stages in the base game hit me like a brick here. I'm not going to act like I'm some sort of speedrun god at Sonic Unleashed, but I've played the game's stages at this point hundreds of times, especially the day stages. I'm very accustomed to the way the game controls and how the mechanics work, but these DLC stages really do ramp up the difficulty. On a first time playthrough, you will miss jumps, lose out on shortcuts and take damage here. With that said, while the 
the difficulty spike is a tremendous one, I actually do enjoy this stage. After playing through the day stages of Unleashed so many times and just boost game levels in general in games like Sonic Colors and Generations, this really steep difficulty feels like an actual real challenge which I haven't really felt from a boost level in a long long time really. The stage starts out in a 2D section on a bridge leading into the grassy islands that we see a lot more of in the first tutorial windmill isle act in the base game. The 2D section the level starts out with is tough and the level design at times is undeniably cheap but there are a lot of mechanics I enjoy like timing your homing attacks with these spike balls and hammers and a big emphasis on using the quick time event boosters consecutively one after another. The stage then switches to a 3D perspective to dash through the less built up rural grassy islands we're shown at the beginning of Apatos. The level actually takes us through the tutorial level backwards with a lot of added obstacles before switching to a 2D perspective up in the sky on floating platforms, allowing us to get a really nice bird's eye view of the gorgeous Apatos Islands with the sunrise. After this 2D section, we're thrown back into a 3D portion where we now run back through the tutorial area we just ran through, but this time the correct way, not reverse, essentially going back on ourselves. This is really fun and the level is much much more busy than the original short tutorial level it's based off. There's a lot of enemies and mechanics thrown at you that keep you on your toes. The length of the stage as well is a welcome addition being quite long and really showing off the grassy islands of Apatos we are only really shown briefly in the base game before heading into the much more built up town. Overall, while the incredibly steep difficulty change from the main game will hit you like a brick on a first playthrough, I would say that Act 1-2 is a great start to the DLC pack and a really fun stage. While Act 1-2 was quite a liberal remix of the original Apatos Act 1 from the base Unleashed, Act 2 is far more conservative. It could be argued really that Act 1-2 changed enough level design from the original stage it was based off that it could basically be classed as its own new stage. Act 2-2 however isn't quite as promising. The base Windmill Isle Act 2 is a much longer and much more complex base stage, so not as much work has been done here to differentiate the DLC level from the original. There's not much here that I'm a fan of to be honest. It's a essentially Windmill Isle Act 2 level design just with cheap added hazards, pits and enemies placed everywhere. Spikes right after ramp jumps and on grind rails, a huge increase in the amount of bottomless pits, much more enemies and QTE events that are much harder. Muscle memory can get you through this to an extent here as the original Windmill Isle Act 2 level design is pretty much all here, just with an addition of cheap deaths and hazards sprinkled everywhere. I've played Windmill Isle Act 2 so many times that I can basically complete the base level with my eyes closed so a much harder remix of the stage would have been a welcome addition here, but the issue is the remix level design isn't harder and good, it's just harder. It's incredibly cheap and the level design is only very subtly changed to where it really just feels like a worse version of the original Act 2. While Act 1-1 definitely was cheap with the hazards and death planes at times, it felt far less outrageous than this and the actual level design was altered significantly so things felt fresh. Here, I'm really not a fan and can't see any scenario really why I would play this over the original Act 2 it's based on. Act 4 thankfully fares much better. This stage is a fully brand new stage and while the difficulty is incredibly hard, the level does feel fresh and it is satisfying to master. The stage is entirely in 3D and there is a huge emphasis on the quick step. The quick step is a fun mechanic in Unleashed so this emphasis for the level didn't really bother me. However, I do feel the difficulty could occasionally be a little bit cheap but generally it's nowhere near as outrageous as the previous stage. If you really focus and get your reflexes right, I do feel that pretty much all hazards and obstacles in this stage can be avoided. Granted, it would take a lot of patience and I found myself basically never boosting in this level just because it gave you essentially no time to react to the constant stream of shit flying towards you on your three lane path, but overall this was a fun level and I was a fan of it. I could see myself going back to it to strive for a better time and master the stage. Okay, so the first night level. To be honest, it was pretty good. Just like the day levels, the difficulty is ramped up to the max here for some reason. I guess that's what they wanted to go for with these DLC packs. The stage starts off with a kind of annoying gimmick where you open a door on a timer and then have to swing off an enemy over a series of flamethrowers to get to the door in time, but it's generally okay. The stage is a remix of the original Apatos Night Act 1, and just like with the first day stage, we are working backwards here through the original stage, which is quite cool. There's an emphasis on the climbing and balancing here, which have been made much harder than the original 
original sections. The climbing has a lot more spikes and enemies that can electrocute you if you grab them at the wrong time. The section where you balance over the beam with the sea below you is as cool and gorgeous as ever but now much harder as there is no way for you to grab onto the beam if you fall off. The final section for the level involves a fight with a few cure and lightning masters and a mini boss fight with a big mother which spawns small rexes and has the really long stretchy arms. Upon starting this fight it's instantly noticeable that all the dark guy enemies have had a serious buff from the base game. This did catch me off guard and actually resulted in me running away to go grab more health and try to fill up my own leash gauge. The fight was a fair challenge but all the enemies did eventually go down. You then have to find 4 gems to activate the door to the room with the gold ring. This wasn't too tedious but I was surprised a couple times when more lightning masters spawned as I was collecting the gems after seemingly killing all the enemies. While much tougher than the base game, this level was generally quite fun and a solid start for the night DLC levels. Fuck this level. Seriously. My god, this is the worst level yet by far. The stage starts with a big fight against a big mother and a shit ton of Rex enemies. Bear in mind, all the enemies here are severely buffed from their original stats in the base game, so this fight in itself is pretty damn hard, but nothing too outrageous. After taking them out, a shit ton of nightmare enemies spawn alongside their stronger and harder alternatives, the deep nightmares, and just to add that cherry on top, you also get cure masters and power masters, which are the wizard enemies that buff all enemies and heal all enemies enemies. These may seem like just standard enemies and not much of a challenge, but bear in mind there's quite a lot of them, they're buffed to hell from how they were in the base game, and on top of that, the power master enemy is buffing an incredibly buffed enemy even more. After taking out these, a pool of ring spawns in the middle of the arena. Heading over there to collect them and replenish your life results in a fuck ton of egg fighters spawning in, all with shields and swords, and two egg fighters that can shoot at you from a distance, along with a cure master to heal them, but just to really twist the fucking knife. Barriers are thrown up around you making the arena you have to fight these really strong buff robots incredibly small. This section is an absolute piss take and really drains your life as it's so hard to dodge attacks in such a small arena, especially when there are the robots that can just shoot at you from a distance. After defeating those enemies, a small part of the force field opens allowing you to get out of that small arena, but now you have to loop around to get to the exit door. As you leap around, more and more enemies spawn, a huge abundance of deep nightmares and power, cure and dark masters, along with their elemental counterparts that have electric and fire powers respectively. You also get a shit ton of egg fighters equipped with shields. Once you finally get to the exit door, the door opens and you run towards it, only to be given a final fuck you where a force field drops, stopping you from escaping and a titan spawns in, which is incredibly stronger than it was in the base game. Now is a good time to mention as well that the quick time special kills you can perform as the Werehog are essentially fucking useless in the night levels for the DLC. The timing for these special kills were already pretty tight in the original game, but now the devs decided that along with making all enemies incredibly stronger, having much more of them attack you at once and spawning much more cure master enemies so they can always be healed, they also decided that the window to press the desired button combination on the special kills should be even shorter than it was in the original game. This literally results in you getting a millisecond to press the button that appears on the screen and I could just not perform the special attacks anymore. Because of this I just stopped using the special attacks completely, making the fights with the bigger enemies like the Titan and the Big Mother far longer than they usually are. After painstakingly withering away the Titan's health and killing him, the door opens and we can run to the goal ring. I absolutely absolutely hated this level and would die a happy death if I never have to play it again. The level takes about 10 minutes to complete and it took me 3 tries so I spent half an hour on this one stage. It also doesn't help that the level takes place exclusively in this one boring circular arena so not even the environment changes as you chug through this mess of a level. I really wasn't a big fan of this stage. The original rooftop run act in Unleashed is probably some of the best level design in the whole game in my opinion. It really is a great iconic stage that I always find myself replaying. The Act 1-2 stage is a remixed harder version of the original rooftop run act and it's pretty horrendous to be honest with you. The main issue is there is no real change at all to the level design. The stage is the exact same layout as the original but just with the added addition of beginner traps with spikes and bombs everywhere. The only addition I enjoyed that the DLC stage brought was adding the bombs on the drift section so you don't have the rails as a fail save if you miss the timing for the drift. That I enjoyed because it actually didn't hold the player's hand and required them to actually drift. The rest of the stage though is just god awful. 
just spikes, pits and bombs everywhere, and they're not even placed in any real cohesive way. It really feels like this level just took 5 minutes to make, and it reminds me of like one of those Sonic Generations extremely hard stage mods you used to see all the time. I can't see myself ever replaying this stage over the original rooftop run. Okay, now this stage is something I can get behind. This stage is primarily 2D, with occasional brief 3D sections for quick step, but I do think that the level design for this stage, while brutal, just like all these DLC stages, is fun and has a rewarding loop to it. A lot of the stage places a big emphasis on the homing attack, but in a unique way. The homing attack is probably one of the easiest manless things to do in a Sonic game. Literally just press a button and Sonic flies at the enemy defeating them on impact, but in this level, you have to time your homing attacks to make very large gaps. Apps. You also have to think about how momentum works and how you can use that to chain homing attacks and make very very tight jumps. There is level design in place that punishes the player for just spamming the homing attack and you really do need to act with precision to beat this stage. There is also quite a big emphasis on those QTE scissor things, again they are used in a difficult but interesting way. Pretty much all the sections in this level I enjoyed and while I found this stage tough I didn't find it unfair like the previous level. It was hard but I always felt that I died from my own fault and nothing felt too cheap. Act 4 was a pretty decent time. The whole stage gimmick is quick stepping, but there is a constant parade of shit flying towards you, so you really do need to be constantly moving and dodging obstacles in this stage. The fact the whole level is basically just quick stepping can get a bit boring at times, but the fact that this level shows off how Spagonia looks with the sunset really makes the stage a mesmerising one and keeps things from getting too stale. Besides, this level really isn't that long anyway. This one I was a big fan of. This stage essentially takes the emphasis that Act 2-2 had on the homing attack and intensifies it by having the stage completely 3D. Having to deal with an additional axis makes timing all the jumps and homing attacks that bit harder. There's plenty of obstacles and things in the way that you can die from, so you really have to think before pressing the X button, which is such a stark difference from just mindlessly spamming the homing attack usually in the main game. The first night level of the Spagonia DLC stages is a pretty mixed bag. It's not horrendous and brutal like the Apatos level from before, but it's just a bit monotonous. The enemy placement here is nowhere near as outrageous as Apatos Night 1-3. There is a fair bit more space to manoeuvre about, so things don't feel anywhere near as claustrophobic, and the actual enemies that spawn, while still buffed to hell compared to the base game, aren't actually too extreme for the DLC stages. The issue really is that the level has a severe lack of any real platforming challenges and relies too heavily on gimmicks like switches and levers. The level is basically completely confined to the back streets of Spagonia and there's a lot of breaking doors and hitting switches just to run back through an alleyway to progress and it just isn't that satisfying of a gameplay loop. Don't get me wrong, the Werehog's focus has always undoubtedly been combat but the gameplay style always excelled in my opinion when platforming challenges were put in between combat encounters to break up the constant fighting. It's always nice as well to explore the different settings of the levels but here we never really leave the back streets of Spagonia and everywhere just feels a bit samey samey. By no means an offensive stage, but just not a very engaging one. It's just meh really. It also really outstates its welcome. Like, really outstates its welcome. Rooftop Run Night Act 2, however, I really enjoyed. This level has a strong emphasis on platforming and manoeuvring Sonic, but it also breaks this up with intense combat encounters. While I lament the DLC night levels for difficulty, it's not that I don't enjoy a challenge. I really do. I've played Sonic Unleashed through so many times at this point that the mechanics are essentially second nature, and it's really a refreshing change to have Sonic levels that expect you to be a pro at the game and really do truly challenge you. I'm actually on board with a steep difficulty increase for the the DLC stages, but my issue is when the difficulty increase is just cheap and poorly designed. It doesn't make levels feel like a fun challenge, just a frustrating headache to get through and not something I'd be replaying anytime soon. With that said, this level is possibly one of the best Werehog DLC stages I've played yet. The combat encounters feel intense and difficult, but not cheap. Well, maybe a little bit cheap, this is Sonic Unleashed, but enough to handle. The platforming sections are well designed and fun to navigate, and the combat encounters make good use of the mini boss for added challenge and generally this is a really fun stage to play through. The level also has some really cool gimmicks like throwing an enemy at a switch to activate it.
This level is a remix of the original act from the main game, and generally I think it's quite good. Don't get me wrong, as with all these DLC day stages, it will absolutely push your reflexes to the limits, but I never really found myself actually getting annoyed from the level design here, save for a couple of 2D sections. The 3D sections have some added obstacles to make what was once an essentially boost and drift mindless section into something that actually requires you to stay on your toes and move with a bit more precision. A fair amount of the 2D sections are designed quite well too, and while hard, the level doesn't just feel like the developers have gone through and placed a load of spikes everywhere randomly. There feels like there is an actual sense of flow here, and enemies and obstacles are placed in challenging but good positions. After the quick step section running on the wall, the level design does take a hit for a while with some stupidly cheap things, like the floating platforms that drop you onto fire after a nanosecond of standing on them. Climbing the tree towards the gold ring as well has a couple of dodgy sections, but generally it's not too bad and I do think this is a fun level that fans of the original who are looking for more of a challenge will enjoy. I initially thought that I would hate this level, but I surprisingly enjoyed it quite a bit. First thing to say is seeing Missouri at sunset is drop dead gorgeous and really makes this level's theming pop and have such a warm feeling. This level spins things completely by rather than just having Sonic get to the gold ring as he's done since well, forever. This level is objective based. I know, I don't like the sound of that either, but to be fair, it's nothing outrageous. To finish the stage, you need to collect 300 rings which will make the gold ring appear. This sounds like it wouldn't work at all, and in a normal level it really wouldn't, but this level is very short and designed around this large tree trunk. The level loops back on itself and has loads of different pathways to take. Now this level, to me, kind of felt like a puzzle level, and I really am here for it to be honest. I needed to find new paths on the spot while running at blistering speeds to collect rings. The level has a timer of 2 minutes so you really are up against the clock. This creates this loop of frantically puzzle solving at high speeds and the way the level is designed to seamlessly loop back on itself makes it really fun to do. Not only this, but after collecting 300 rings, you then need to actually find the path to the goal ring, which really isn't obvious and really tests you to try out all the different branches and paths to get to the goal ring, all while that very strict 2 minute timer counts down. This level had a gimmick that on paper I really wouldn't think I would enjoy for a Sonic stage but I really did, however that is because because this stage is designed very well around this objective of collecting rings, I can't imagine this type of thing working for many other stages. I really was not a fan of this stage. The level is plastered with QTE springs and boost pads and floating platforms and basically just stuff that really slows the pace down. You basically go nowhere in the whole stage and while some brief sections can be fun, the level on itself is very short and very cheap. There is also a huge invisible wall in the stage that is so blatant it amazes me why the devs even bothered and didn't just put spikes there or something. It's clear that just to stop me skipping parts of the stage from the momentum I've gained and it really is a cheap and very jarring placement. Not a great stage that I can see myself going back to anytime soon. This level is essentially completely on rails and really is just quick stepping and jumping. It's a pretty decent level but these quick step sections with the robots always felt fun when they were woven into bigger levels and have you seamlessly transition into and out of them. Here the bulk of the level is just quick stepping and while still fun it can lose a bit of steam when it feels like you're doing the same thing forever. Thankfully the whole stage isn't just quick stepping, the level does briefly switch to a couple of 2D sections which are well designed and fun enough. They're not long at all though and it's not long before you're back to quick stepping. This is a pretty decent level and there's definitely fun to be had, it's just very very automated and features a lot of quick stepping. It all depends really on how much you enjoy the loop of the quick step 3 lane gameplay. One of the big robots that chases you from behind appears midway through the level for a change of pace and while the camera flips behind Sonic and the gameplay is slightly different, it's still the same basic loop of dodge between 3 lanes and jump to avoid attacks. <laughs> Act 3 was a pretty fun time, all things considered. For starters, unlike a lot of Werehog levels where the stages are essentially 70-80% to 80 combat, this level has a pretty big emphasis on platforming and using the Werehog's climbing abilities. The stage starts off with an obstacle course of poles and grips that you have to activate with the switch, but the switch will only activate the climbing stuff for a short period of time. This adds a sense of urgency and did catch me out a few times. Because of this, you need to essentially perfect your gameplay and have a really smooth and fast run to progress in this level. Mastering the level like this is really rewarding and I enjoyed it a lot. It was challenging but it doesn't feel cheap. There's a mini boss midway through the level with a big mother and a couple of nightmares to keep you on your toes as well, which I thought was well placed and a good change of pace after the very platforming heavy section we just finished. This last part of the level isn't quite as solid though. It's a platforming challenge with poles and is okay, but the fire placement is pretty annoying to avoid. And on top of that, missing the jump causes fire dark masters to spawn, which are a really annoying enemy as it is. But this gang rush if you miss an already very 
finicky jump is just cheap. Once you do make the jump, there is a titan waiting for you there, so after defeating him, the gold ring is revealed. A titan I actually have no issue with, it's a fair final challenge to finish the level. Overall, I did enjoy myself with this stage and could see myself going back to it occasionally. I think for the most part, it was well designed. Act 4 is another great level in my opinion. There is still a huge emphasis on platforming and climbing here, and the challenge in that regard is arguably more intense than the previous level, however there is also a lot more combat in this stage. The level itself feels a lot bigger and a lot more complex than Act 3, which upon further consideration was quite a light level. I will say that this stage is absolutely gorgeous. The setting of being high up in the trees climbing between them, with the huge savannah spanning for miles below you, which is filled with foliage and animals everywhere. You can even see Eggman's Missouri base in the distance, which is a really cool attention to detail and something I never even noticed before, which you can probably tell from my footage as I stop for a couple of minutes to check it out. Overall, great level. Again, challenging but not cheap. The stage on a whole felt very well rounded. This is another remix level of the original Dragon Road Act 1 from the main game, and it isn't a great stage overall. It's not abysmal, but these remix stages seem to be the weakest of the DLC levels by far. The original levels they're modifying were designed so well to combine speed and platforming, and to start messing around with that kind of just ruins the level. There are brief moments of the stage I enjoy, as I have played Sonic Unleashed for so long now, I do enjoy a challenge and I am constantly on my toes in a level that usually I could play with my eyes closed, but with that said, the waste Sonic Team have gone about making this stage, and many of the others, is just incredibly cheap and just results in an unsmooth experience and many many deaths that you just feel are unfair. There are spike balls placed everywhere and that already annoying section from the original level where you platform on those spinning discs has been expanded dramatically and is now a fucking nightmare with very hard jumps and shooting robots everywhere. While interesting for a first time playthrough to change things up a bit, this just isn't a stage I can see myself going back to anytime soon. Yet another remix stage, this time of Act 2. Now, to be fair to this level, the 2D perspective makes it much easier to see oncoming enemies and obstacles, making things feel a bit more fair. I do like how the level is quite limiting with the boost, only offering rings sporadically. This forces you to save your boost energy for running on water, and it's a nice change of pace for a game that usually has you boosting every second you possibly can. With that said, this level is still incredibly hard and has some very cheap level design. There are a lot of beginner's traps here that drag down the stage. The level design is pretty fun though, so I would say I did enjoy my time with it overall. It is very very difficult though and the aforementioned limited boost energy is very strict. More than once I ran out of boost. This is a very short but brutal level. The stage is incredibly fast paced and tests your reflexes intensely throughout the whole level with no real break. With that said, this one, while very very hard, is quite good. The level design is fun and engaging. The stage does bring back the spinning disc platforms from Dragon Road Act 1, but they're nowhere near as annoying and don't outstay their welcome. The level really tests your understanding of the boost gameplay style, making you utilise light speed dashes, timing homing attacks and QTEs. The 2D section of the level really tests your on the spot thinking and timing your wall jumps. Overall, a great level I could see myself replaying in the future. Another really fun level, with the interesting gimmick of needing you to complete 4 laps. The level essentially takes place fully on water, making you constantly have to keep moving. There are plenty of things like ramps, springs and ground rails around the stage to help you deal with the water. Typical Sonic level stuff. The level is really fun and engaging. Each lap, the level design changes slightly to keep you on your toes, and again, following the theme of this DLC, the stage is hard, but it's not too hard, and while you do need to keep on top of things and constantly be aware of your surroundings, if you concentrate and bring your A-game, you can finish this level on no issues first try, probably. This remix stage has some really nice scenery. The level starts off having you swing off poles up a waterfall. After that section, you have a huge fight with a large amount of enemies. This doesn't feel cheap though, as there's a large space to run around in, and you have a lot of freedom on how you approach the fight. The level uses a lot of those flags you pull back and fling off to fly to different areas. While not really interesting from a gameplay perspective, it really highlights how pretty Sonic Unleashed can still be. Chunnan at night looks gorgeous even all these years later. Near the end of the level, there are two switches you need to activate to open a door that are guarded by two big mothers, which, while maybe a bit excessive, is fine. They aren't anywhere near as hard as the titans, so they seem like a pretty fair fight to me. After you open the door, you are greeted to a titan, which once defeated, will reveal the gold ring. This level was a pretty solid mix between platforming and combat. Probably a little bit more combat, but the enemies were placed in good locations, and the fights weren't a complete shit show like Windmill Isle 1-3. 
This is a great stage with some really nice lighting and scenery. Weaving us in and out of the Great Walls of China, I mean Chunnan, there's a strong emphasis on pole swinging and grabbing flying enemies to make your way between the walls as water lurks on the floor, but the stage does stop at the right times to throw some enemies at you. When they do do this, the actual space you have is pretty good. The Werehog levels tend to suffer combat wise when they throw a lot of enemies at you in very tight small spaces. There's a section that involves time switches to open poles and grips, adding a sense of urgency and making you climb and maneuver fast which is a really enjoyable gameplay hook. A really nice stage with a cool vibe. This remix level of the original Cool Edge stage is a bit of a mixed bag. While the increased challenge at times can be interesting, the level is just overstocked with cheap traps and enemy placements. Spikes are placed absolutely fucking everywhere and so much of the stage time is spent just taking damage. I'm sure if you committed to this stage and fully learned the layout, you could weave in and out of the obstacles the stage throws at you, but that would take hours and maybe even days of replaying this stage. Coming into this level as a new stage, there are so many sections that you will just take damage no matter what. The only real way to avoid taking damage on this stage during a first playthrough is to just slow down completely and move through the stage carefully so you can see the obstacles ahead and react to them in time, but at that point the whole concept of a sonic level is lost. The beginning portion of the stage just wrecks that original cool edge stage opening where you're given a long vast stretch of land to run across, followed by a blast across a lake to advance to a 2D section, but in the remix level the section has been flooded with spikes, fire, enemies and basically anything you can think of in the game that will make you take damage. There is no space to run and you're just moving too fast to fucking see anything coming towards you. There are some alright sections of the level like the bobsled bit in 2D and 3D are pretty decent but a lot of this stage is just a much cheaper, harder and poorly designed version of the original Cool Edge Act 1. This was a much better stage than Act 1-2 and I really had a good time with it. This level places a big emphasis on the homing attack and timing. I really enjoy the DLC levels that make you time your homing attacks. It adds a level of strategy and complexity to a move which is typically a very simple action that you use all the time but never really think about. There's a lot of interest in enemy placements and an abundance of spikes that really keep you on your toes. The 2D sections are difficult but never feel unfair and the 3D sections are the same as well. The level has a good balance between 2D and 3D parts overall to be honest. There's a section later on in the level that has you using the bobsled and it's a really fun and well designed challenge. Again, constantly keeping you on your toes. Act 2-2 was a great time and a stage I could definitely see myself going back to in the future. This stage is timed. You only have 1 minute and 20 seconds to complete the level. The stage is short but very wide and places a huge emphasis on drifting. Now drifting in the boost games is a very fun and rewarding mechanic to pull off, so this stage looks appealing, but if I were being honest, the Sonic Unleashed Drift is definitely not the best. It's very, very wide and you really need some time with it to understand and master it. With that said, if you time things and go in at the right speed, you can pull off the drift and utilise it fully. So overall, this stage was a pretty fun time. There is some cheap traps in the stage but it's nowhere near as bad as some of the other DLC levels and the drift sections are fun to pull off. However, the drift is a bit hit and miss and can result in some deaths that just feel a bit unfair and probably wouldn't happen if you were playing Sonic Generations. One thing to say about this level is that it is absolutely gorgeous. The skybox and lighting is a really nice orange sunrise and Sonic Unleashed's engine never fails to amaze me at how great it can look over 15 years later. Act 4 was also great. The level is quite small and there is water below the whole stage that will instantly kill you. The level persists of tall platforms above the water with enemies and ramps. You have to use your speed and your momentum to jump from ramp to ramp. It's a really satisfying level and you get some serious airtime. Overall, a really interesting stage. Halfway through, you come to a switch and activate it which reveals the goal ring back at the start of the stage. Now you go backwards through that level to get back to your original starting point. But the level design is changed around a fair bit with a lot of homing attacks and some light speed dash trails. Great level I would definitely come back to. This level has a big emphasis on fire. You need to use the flame fan robots to light up torches. When lit, they will activate things like poles and grips to help you progress through the stage. Spread between these sections, there are some fights with dark masters and nightmares. A decent fight, but not overly challenging. There are some sections where you have to balance on a beam while avoiding fire. The level ends with a fight with a big mother. Overall, a pretty fun level with an emphasis on platforming and climbing. Nothing too complicated though.
This level starts similar to the last stage, using the fire robots to light torches. However, after pulling a lever to open the door, there's a huge brawl with a load of deep nightmares. The level then places an emphasis on activating altars with the right coloured gemstones. The level has a lot of ice and some bottomless pits, so there's some sections where you have to carefully carry the gemstone across the ice. Overall, the stage is okay, but it can be a bit boring with the big emphasis on going back and forth to grab gemstones for the altars. You don't actually traverse through a great deal of the level, so while okay for a one-off play through, this isn't really something I'd ever go back to. This was a pretty horrendous level. Honestly, I'm struggling on what even to say about it. Essentially, take the original Arid Sands Act 1, but with bullshit everywhere. The stage is littered with fire, pits, spikes, and enemies all over the place. The 3D sections at the beginning are especially unforgiving. It's just so hard to see ahead of you and you're just constantly taking damage. They even added spikes to the walls on the drifting sections, which with Sonic Unleashed's very wide drift that will often have you touching walls is not a good mix. The only time I enjoyed any real sections of this level were when the level design was basically untouched from the original Arid Sand stage. Not a fun level. Seriously, just play the original which is a great stage. This level is so out of left field. This is the only level in the DLC pack like this. Hell, this is the only level in the game like this. Rather than a typical Sonic stage which has you manoeuvring from point A to point B, this level throws you in a relatively small area and gives you 10 minutes to find 10 Chao. The level is kind of circular and there is pretty much complete freedom in how you want to catch the Chao. The level in itself is fine, I guess, like it's not super hard like the other stages and the level design is okay, but it's just like, why? This stage completely throws out any of the staples of Sonic Unleashed level design and hell, just the principles of Sonic the Hedgehog. There is no real speed, no progressing through the stage and seeing new set pieces and sights, just you looking for Chow in a small area. This feels like some sort of side content you can find in the hub world or something, not like just a normal stage alongside the other day stages. The level is not horrendous, but it just isn't Sonic. It's so out of left field and not something I would ever go back to. This was a really solid night stage. I'll start by saying that it's a really pretty level that showcases the beauty of Sonic Unleashed's lighting engine. Shamar at night is gorgeous, and the level has you platforming across ruins and cliffs. The level has a big emphasis on fire with a lot of fire dark masters. The emphasis on fire is what really makes the lighting pop and creates a really cozy atmosphere. There is also a huge focus on these explosive crates that you can pick up and throw at enemies. This will always be a super satisfying thing to do. The level really is well varied. There's a wide variety of enemy types thrown at you and a variety of different climbing challenges, finishing with a really challenging fight against two titans. Great stage overall. Now this stage initially was pretty good. The whole gimmick of the level is basically jumping from these hanging poles. It's a lot harder than it seems though as there's moving spikes on them that are really difficult to avoid. If you fall as well, you're falling straight to your death. The overall level has a big emphasis on climbing and it's definitely one of the most challenging climbing levels so far. But with that said, the level was still fun and I was having a good time with it. That is until the mini boss with the titan at the very end. This fight was fucking painful. The fight takes place on this very small platform that is very, very easy to fall off. You have to deal with the titan which takes up pretty much the whole platform and then on top of that there's also three fire dark masters to deal with. These are really annoying to kill considering they float, throw fireballs at you and hang around on the edge of the platform since the titan takes up the middle. Oh and you also have the titan constantly attacking you while you're trying to get rid of them. The biggest issue by far is the fight with the titan. If you're caught by his attacks you're thrown back. However since this platform you're on is so small if you're thrown back you will fall to your death every single time. This this mini boss drags this level down from a good stage to just average. The level is pretty good right up until the end, but that boss with the titan at the end is just an absolute piss take. Yet another remix stage. Now the original Skyscraper Scamper is one of my favourite stages in the whole of Sonic Unleashed, and probably one of my favourite Sonic stages period. The stage just has some great level design with a lot of verticality I'm really big on. This remixed much harder version I did generally enjoy. Don't get me wrong, there are some very cheap sections, most of which seem to be at the beginning of the stage, but with that said I still had fun with this one. There's a bit too many spikes on the tubes here, but the grind rail sections and the part where you run up the building using quick step have much more challenge and are really fun. It doesn't feel poorly designed, a very challenging but good level that will test your skills. 
This was a great stage. The level predominantly takes place on a long stretch of highway. There's a huge emphasis on quick stepping. The level is a really fun time. The track is littered with obstacles, but things are placed fairly. There's loads of bombs and moving things to weave in and out of, and there is also encounters with the laser robots that restrict you to three lanes. Towards the end of the level, there's an extended section against one of those big spherical robots that you need to dodge with quick step. This section though pulls the camera way out to a top-down perspective which has never really been used before and it makes it really easy to dodge the robot's attacks. The new perspective makes the admittedly overused enemy feel fairly fresh. That kind of sums up this level really. Fresh. It feels engaging throughout and the level design doesn't feel tired or reused. I feel like I'm seeing a new part of Empire City with this level. This stage was pretty decent overall. You climb from rooftop to rooftop, taking on enemies. The enemy selection is a mix between robots and Dark Guy spawns. The rooftops don't feel too small, and the fights overall, while challenging, don't feel really cheap like some other levels do. There is a mini boss fight with the Titan, but again, there's plenty of space to take him on. As you progress through the stage, the level switches up to a focus on climbing with death pits. There are a lot of poles to swing from, and also there's a lot of balance beams to walk across. Some break as you move, so you do have to be quick. There is also a lot of beams that can electrocute you, so these balancing sections can really feel tense, but fun. Towards the end of the stage, you have to swing off a load of dark bats to get to a switch, activate it, and then swing back using the same dark bats. The issue is that some of them shoot projectiles at you, and some of them periodically electrify you. On top of that, once you pull the switch, the camera doesn't pan back round and stays at a really awkward angle, essentially making you make a leap of faith that often can result in death. That section does drag down this level, but overall the stage is still a fun time. Skyscraper Scamper Night Act 3 was a fun level too. You essentially are scaling two big tall skyscrapers. You slowly climb up the towers by swinging from poles to poles, grabbing grips and jumping to platforms. It's really satisfying getting to the top where a titan is waiting for you. Again, it's challenging, but there's enough space to where it doesn't feel cramped. After defeating him, you move on to the second tower and platform your way up to the top. At the top, there are two titans waiting for you, but again, there's enough space and it makes for a really engaging fight. Overall, I really like like this level's verticality and emphasis on climbing. The titans at the top scratched the combat itch and overall I was a fan. This was a great remix level. Firstly, this has got to be one of the best looking stages in Sonic Unleashed. I mean, Jesus, this game is incredibly good looking for 2008. There's a lot of added obstacles and enemies, but generally things feel well placed, and this level was great to run through. I really like the addition of running on the waterfall near the end of the stage. In the original stage, you grind on rails near the waterfalls, but you never interact with them. They're just a set piece, but here we actually run across them, and it's a really cool surprise. This was a good level, but it was very short. On my first try, I got an S rank and finished the stage in 50 seconds. The level is a mix between running on water and tight platforming. The running on water is great and features very wide level design by nature, but when the level design changes, you have to really tighten up your game and refine things. Really short but sweet level. This is another short but sweet level. I actually think I prefer this to the previous stage, despite how similar it is. This time around, the stage is essentially completely focused on running on water. The stage is absolutely gorgeous, and I like how further into the stage, you're running on water between tall cliffs with a lot of foliage. At one point, you have to take on those laser robots that shoot at lanes forcing you to quick step. This is a really tense and fresh use of the enemy as you're running on water, so can't afford to get hit at all. Overall, this and Act 4 were great levels. My only small gripe would be how short they were. For how fun the stages were to play, I would have loved to see more. Realistically, Act 4 and Act 5 could have probably been combined for one big level. This level has you hopping from island to island. There's brief platforming with poles and falling platforms, but the bulk of this stage is combat. The level is obsessed with throwing titans at you. The stage starts straight away with a titan boss fight, and throughout the level, they're just thrown at us. There are also a few dark masters spread about, but really it's mostly titans. Weirdly enough, I actually did enjoy this level, even with the abundance of titans. The level is absolutely gorgeous again with the moonlight kiss sea, and the warm glow of the torches on the islands. There's a lot of space on the islands as well, so you don't feel too cramped taken on the army of titans. 
This is the final DLC level and it was a pretty good time. The whole level basically takes place in this large cylinder shaped pit. There is water filling the entire thing, meaning it's very easy to fall and drown. You essentially need to platform over to different switches which when pulled will increase the water level. Each time the water level is increased, new routes are made available to climb up to the next switch. It's a really fun rewarding platform challenge and it showcases how good this game's water can look, especially when mixed with the lighting of the parts of the stage that have been engulfed as the water level rises. Finally reaching the top, there is a long walk up to what seemed to be an area where the game was going to throw every single fucking enemy at me, but once I got there, there was a small fight with a few nightmares, but it was nothing intense surprisingly. Overall a great level with a strangely chill vibe considering it's the last DLC stage. Okay, wow. That was a fucking experience, and boy did this take a while to write. I've had some high highs and I've had some low lows. This is by far the most extensive and comprehensive Sonic the Hedgehog DLC that's ever been released to my knowledge. Every single country in the game got new day and night stages, but is it worth your time? It's no secret that this DLC pack is not beginner friendly at all. It's clear it was made for people who felt they had mastered Sonic Unleashed and these levels are very, very hard. If you aren't at least competent at Sonic Unleashed day and night gameplay styles, I genuinely think you would struggle to even finish this DLC pack, but I do very much fit into that target group, so did I have a good time? Well, I'm going to have to whip out the chalkboard here. In total, there are 42 stages added to the game. Going through each stage individually, I found that 31 of the 42 stages were what I would class as good levels. 5 of the 42 stages were just average, and 6 of the levels were just bad. So if we do 31 divided by 42, then times by 100, we get 73.8, which will round up for the sake of simplicity. Hell, 74% is a higher score than Sonic Frontiers on Metacritic. So in conclusion, do I think that the Sonic Unleashed DLC is worth your time, well, it's a difficult one. For the most part, I had a lot of fun with it, but I can recognise that this DLC is for a very specific niche crowd. If you love Sonic Unleashed and you really feel like you've mastered the day and night gameplay styles, this is definitely for you, and it will really test your skills, which can be a really welcome change if you're just breezing through the base game's levels on repeat playthroughs since you're just so good at the game. However, outside of that group, I really don't know if I can recommend this. A lot of average players are going to really struggle with these stages and if you don't know what you're doing you're going to have to put in a lot of patience to finish these levels. The DLC in itself is such a weird piece in Sonic's history. Here Sonic Team were given the opportunity to go back to Unleashed and expand every single location in the game, save for Eggman Land, and they choose to expand them with the most hard, soul crushing, anti-beginner levels they possibly can. If you look at what Sonic DLC is now with Sonic Origins Plus and the free Sonic Frontiers DLC and it's all expanding the game to the masses. The Sonic Frontiers DLC especially is adding so much content to the game to bring in new players and bring back old ones simultaneously, but the Unleashed DLC is so painstakingly hard it's isolated itself from most players by far, leaving a small crowd of Sonic fans who have played Unleashed to death who will like it. So for me, I did enjoy my time here. I got really, really frustrated and I died a lot because some of the level design is incredibly cheap, there is absolutely no way around it, but I did have a good time. If you're like me and feel fairly competent at Unleashed, I would recommend the DLC. It's really cheap nowadays as well, and who knows how much longer the DLC will even be up for with the aging storefronts they're listed on. Seriously, the 360 and PS3 store look like they could go any day. However, if you haven't got much experience with Unleashed or don't feel like you flow very well with the Boost and Werehog formula, be warned, this DLC is brutal, and you will not have a good time. I've been Lemon, and I want to thank you all for watching. Have a good night.